All right. Now that all of the porting, polishing, blending, epoxying, pumping, everything is done to the heads, comes the last and final part, which is going to be hand honing the guides and the valve job. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. First thing I do, which is I usually take a um, a chamfer tool, okay, and this is just where you know you pull it nose the valve guides, and you have to go in there. This is a wedge, and I'll just go in and make a few circles around and trim that out and get it ready to shoot the hone through them. Now. I want to talk about the valves for a minute. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer shot. These are SI's top of the line um, 205-160 valves. And one of the ways that you can tell, I don't know if the video will show it, but on their top of the line valves, it'll always have a 30 degree back cut on it along with the 45 degree seat. I've used a lot of valves from different manufacturers, but SI is definitely one of the ones up there at the top. And now what I'm going to do is let's slide them in here and see what it looks like inside the combustion chamber. It ain't much of an enlargement, and, and um, like I said, it's not about valve size. It's all about correcting that bowl and what ProComp done with the heads. Now, as you can see, that's about as much as you want to take out of it safely because of the way that they put the seats in the head. But this is going to allow me to straighten up a problem, which when I do the valve job here, I'm going to show you what I come up with. And hopefully, I don't have to go back and retouch these chambers again, but more than likely I will because somewhere on here, it's going to leave a dad blame machinist edge on it. And I just don't like to send my heads out like that unless when you take your hands on a head bite's head, you're going to be able to run your fingers through every bit of it and not catch no ridge. Um, the most exciting part for me is CCing the head at the end. There's no doubt. These are the baddest 190s I've ever done, um, hands down, trying to get them the shape to make it work with the manifold, which we will be going into the manifold here in just a minute. But let's break out the, uh, the, the next step is going to be to break out the uh, honing and get that done. But let's take a look a minute. We got our monstrous 1405 exhaust, full raised to the roof, full all the way side to side on the width and a nice transition bullet nose guide on them. You can see um, where the tube is now where I installed them. All that's all cleaned up. And believe me, it takes a few hours to get all that epoxy off. Let me see if I can get you a decent inside shot here. Uh, yeah. See, you can barely see the tube. All right, you can barely see the tube expose itself, and that's what you want. You don't want a great big hunk of tube. There is one thing I'll show you here for shits and giggles. It's pretty interesting. Uh, the left side of the port, because of it, the core shift, they'll be less exposed on this side and more exposed on this side. And the math is the same. I've got the shape, all the, the math measurements exactly where they need to be. It's just the core shift in the head. But uh, I am going to CC a couple of them, one left, one right, then we're going to CC an exhaust and then a chamber because the Denmark Duo, they need to know their chamber sizes to do what they do. I understand one of them's a 350 and one's a 383. So anyway, um, all that leveled out, done. Oh, I will clean all this up, of course. I, I took a wire brush and got the overhang off of it, cleaned it up a little bit, but I will clean the surface up. I've got a real smooth polishing pad. I'll get that straight. And so, anyway, all right, let's go ahead and break the hone out and get that part done and um, see if we can hone these valves into shape and then work on the valve job in the last part, which is resetting the bowls. And then my favorite part, CC in the ports.